If you were watching our channel back in December 2021, you saw that we posted a string of videos about holiday events we went to in the weeks leading up to Christmas. One of those videos was about the Christmas events at the Gaylord Palms Resort in Orlando, Florida. We focused on the events in that video, but we promised we would do a resort tour and a review about Gaylord Palms in the future. Well, the future is now. We spent the final night of our December 2021 trip to Orlando at Gaylord Palms, and we are going to show you our room, as well as the very cool pool area and the pretty awesome glass ceiling atrium that Gaylord Properties are known for. This resort is just a few miles away from the major Orlando theme parks, Disney World, Universal, SeaWorld, Fun Spot. You can get there in just a matter of minutes. Fun Spot? That's right, I included that one. The resort does have a shuttle to the Walt Disney World parks and to Disney Springs that is free for guests, but their shuttle does not go to other area attractions or to the airport, so you will either need to use rideshare or rent a car. We have talked before about their Christmas events, but as we post this video in March 2022, they have a lot of spring and Easter events going on for their guests, some of which only take place on select days, so visit their website if you want more information. They then have a summer schedule of events and following that, a Halloween event schedule. Here's the main lobby where you check in for your stay, which was decorated nicely for the season. Now up to our room. The bathroom had double sinks, which is a helpful touch when we're both trying to get ready in the morning. The room had a shower with a glass door, no bathtub. Body wash, shampoo, and conditioner pumps were all hanging on the wall of the shower. This was a king room, including taxes and the $38 a night resort fee. We paid just over $500 for one night here which is why we did not stay here two nights. There's also a $24 self-parking fee if you bring a car with you. There was a closet with lots of hanging space, an extra blanket and pillow, an iron and ironing board, and a luggage rack. There was a desk with an office chair, a dresser for those of you who are vacation unpackers. There's a safe and a mini fridge. The room had a flat panel TV. A ceiling fan. A single cup coffee maker with complimentary coffee and tea. The king size bed was comfortable. We got a really good night's sleep here. We had floor to almost ceiling windows that looked out on another building at the resort and also had a bit of a view of the pool area, which we'll talk about more in a minute. The room was expensive. This was an eight night trip to Florida. We stayed at a Universal Hotel the first couple nights, which we'll do a video of soon. And then we stayed at this hotel on our final night in town. We have friends from church who moved to Orlando last summer, and they invited us to stay at their house the five nights in the middle of our trip. Without their hospitality, I don't think we could have afforded this room. So we can understand if a stay here is cost prohibitive for many travelers. We have always wanted to stay at a Gaylord property because we heard such good things, but if we had to pay for all eight nights in the hotel, we definitely would not have stayed here. So huge thank you to our friends for letting us stay with them. And we can understand if you think the price isn't worth it. You can check out the resort, eat at the restaurants, and go see the holiday shows without staying at the hotel. 
though we suggest looking into reservations if you're going to try to do all those things. Their pool area is a water park called Cypress Springs that is open to guests staying at the resort only. There's a kids play area, There are also three large water slides. The play area and slides and the flow rider all closed at 5 p.m. and we didn't get out to the pool until about 5 p.m. so that's why there are no people in this footage. There was a zero entry pool which stayed open till 7 p.m as did the Crystal River Rapids, which is the opposite of a lazy river. The current is forceful as you float quickly past rock formations, through a cave, and under a waterfall. This was a lot of fun. They also had a couple of hot tubs that also closed at 7 p.m. And they had cabanas you can rent for an extra cost as well. Look into that if you want a somewhat private space to call your own at the water park. Once 7 p.m. hit, there was still a quiet pool open a short distance away, so we headed past the pool bar and over to this pool, where there were only a handful of other people out there swimming with us after dark. By the way, if you like this video, please help us out by letting it show. Click the thumbs up to register your positive feelings with YouTube. The part of this resort we were most excited about was the glass ceiling atrium. It was themed to various parts of Florida. Of course, while we were there in December, it was mainly themed to Christmas. The Christmas shows and light displays happened in this area of the hotel, as well as in their conference center next door. As you can see, there are a lot of rooms with balconies looking out over the atrium. Those rooms with the balconies in the atrium are about $40 to $50 more expensive per night. But it would have been nice to have a view of the Christmas light show that takes place each night in the atrium. One section of the atrium is themed to Key West. This area has a gift shop. It also has a large boat docked inside the atrium that is actually a seafood restaurant named Moore. We couldn't eat there as there were no reservations available the day we arrived. Most resorts we go to outside of Disney World, that isn't much of a problem. You just show up and wait for a table. We didn't know how popular this hotel and its restaurants and shows were going to be having never been there before. This is the largest area of the atrium, the St. Augustine themed area. It had a small recreation of the famous fort in St. Augustine, the Castillo de San Marcos. They also had a fish pond and waterfalls, and even some small alligators living in a habitat in this area. There's a Mediterranean buffet restaurant here that we couldn't get reservations for. And there was also a coffee shop in this area called the Cocoa Bean. The other atrium is themed to the Florida Everglades. There are lots of trees and rustic looking buildings lining the boardwalks here. It has a restaurant called the Old Hickory Steakhouse, which was also not taking any reservations that night. We did eventually get a table at Wreckers Sports Bar without needing a reservation, though we did have to wait a while for a table. Here's the menu. You can pause the video if you want to get a good look at it. There were lots of screens all around where customers could watch sports. Jack got the Wreckers Burger with fries for $17. I got the Crispy Gulf Fish and Chips for $24. The food here was pretty good. There was another bar and seating area upstairs that was closed. In between the main hotel and the conference center was this outdoor yard where people were waiting for their tables. 
From there, it was just a few steps to the conference center where the Christmas Alpine Village was set up. So Jack, what are your final thoughts? This was a great resort. I'm glad we checked it out. The water park and atrium are amazing, but there are a lot of nice hotels in the Orlando area that are much more reasonably priced. So I can't imagine staying here again. If you go here, get advance reservations for dinner and advance tickets for any holiday shows if there are any going on during your stay. To see more about Gaylord's Christmas events, click the link at the end of this video. And here's another link about a place that we love in Orlando, Discovery Cove. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through.